Good morning, lovely people. It's Wednesday, so it's time for Bible study. Um, I want to talk to y'all about fear. With everything that's going on, please excuse the chaos in the background. I'm still working on cleaning up my studio, getting it all sorted and put away. Um, with everything that's going on, door knockers and all of the wonderful things that the news is telling us about, a lot of people are afraid. And I'm not going to say it's unjustifiable, um, especially over the last 18 months. The world has hit us with some really, really, really weird stuff. And we're all on edge. We're all worried we're all you know the whole scourge thing took us all by surprise came out of the blue and then the shortages and this kind of stuff and nobody was expecting it. even preppers I mean you know despite the common view of preppers most of us are not prepping for life-changing catastrophes. We're prepping for the normal stuff. Tornadoes, hurricanes, power outages, um, snowstorms, that sort of thing. You know, that's what we're really prepping against. We have the other stuff. But that's not our... That's not our main goal. We know that while those things may happen, the other stuff's going to happen first or more frequently. So, you know, a lot of this stuff just came out of the blue. And it has a lot of people constantly frightened. It's like there's no respite from it. And I want to, I want to talk about that today. I want to address that. I don't know if you can see it, but, you know, be still and know that I am God. That's what we're going to talk about. Um, I'm going to read you the 46th Psalm. As we know, most of these were written by David. Um, most of them. We don't really know for sure. This one was written um, as a song for female voices, sopranos. And here we go. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when the earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the earth. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is one of my most relied upon passages of scripture. Um, you know how when we read, you know, what I just read to you was the New Living Translation. And part of the reason I like that is because when the translators translated it, they kept in mind that this was all intended to be spoken to crowds verbally not to be sat down and read from a book, or a scroll in their days. Um, it was read to, it was meant to be spoken aloud to a crowd. So hearing it spoken aloud 
it just it flows more smoothly for me but um, you know when we read we sort of translate whichever translation into the way our brains work and the way our minds understand it and when I read be still and know that I am God my Lane's mental translation turns it into chill Lane I've got this and that is probably the most powerful thing is to remember that our God's got this he has things in hand and no, they may not be the things that we want but whatever comes whatever happens be still and know that he is God do not let your fears overtake you do not let your concerns overtake you do not let your anger overtake you take you because be still means more than just fear not it means calm down take a deep breath address the things that you can address and the things that you cannot address to quote Elsa let him go let God do God's job and you do yours so I hope somebody finds comfort from that I hope somebody finds peace from that <sighs> I usually do I always do um, I have to show something off when I'm flipping through the through my Bible to read that verse to you. I keep stuff in my Bible. And on that verse, I had two photographs. One, I don't know if you can see it, I'm going to try to get it up here without too much glare, is my son and his daddy many, many years ago, like 30 years ago. And the other one, I don't, really don't know if you can see this, this is an ancient Polaroid, is of my dad's favorite dog. Daddy raised and trained golden retrievers, and that was Lady, Texas Lady. Texas Lady Aggie, actually. She was his bitch and his foundation dog. And she was like another sister. You know, Daddy, that was his girl. But yeah. So, the wonderful things we find in our Bibles. As you can see, my studio is a nightmare. But it is actually improving. I'm at my sewing desk right now. Here, I'll take that. Let's try it. See if I can move this around some without making you all absolutely nauseous and feeling like you're on a roller coaster <clears throat> I'm gonna do this on the tripod so we shall see let me flip it around yes there's my empty desk we're gonna hang the television up there that's why there's nothing on my desk but storage 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 most of that is actually sorted it's just not put away and then we have fabric and my sewing machines are behind those doors and all of their bobbins and notions and stuff are down there and then more stuff that really hasn't been unpacked but been shoved up out of the way yeah I got my bookshelf done and more yarn and more yarn and more sewing stuff and we got my work table built again yeah. That's just random stuff. And a loom. Surprise, surprise. And let's see what we got over here. My most of that I made. With obviously with the exception of the straw hat and the fur Kalinskis. Yeah, all that stuff I made. And more yarn. My computer desk buried behind other things. My bobbin lace pillow, bobbin lace and weaving tools, weaving, spinning, my yarn swift, my embroidery hoop, <sighs> the fireplace, um, 
more boxes and stuff I have to unpack. But yeah, it's coming along. I have to. I have the sweetest husband ever. Um, he got me a 36 inch floor loom that's coming by the end of this month, by the middle of this month. So I have to get this room ready to accept a 42 inch wide piece of equipment. But yeah, we'll go out in the girl's yard. They're out here playing in the Queen Anne's Lace. I have gathered uh, about a half a gallon of blackberries. I have discovered that I have frost grapes and elderberry and a humongous black walnut tree and two peach trees and lots of Rosa Sharon and elm trees and some beautiful silver maples. But yeah, I'm going to lose the grape, part of the blackberries, if not all of them, and probably the elderberry when we remove these trees that are way too close to the house and not well thought out when they were planted um but yeah you know i'll replant elderberry and i'll replant the grapes and i'll replant the blackberries we're gonna lose the pear tree but that's okay because i think there's only one and you have to plant pear trees in pears hmm, who, who would have thunk it but we have two peach trees. I found a fig tree. I tell you what, the picture of this app has been a lifesaver for me. Because none of this is stuff I recognize because it's not stuff I'm used to. Um, the trees and stuff here are different. The weeds here are different. Um, so we're learning. Um, we have... Queen Anne's Lace. I don't know if y'all can see that. That stuff grows everywhere here. It is everywhere. But yeah, the young guys are supposed to come and mow today. And uh, our next project is going to be to rip out all of that. And that, the wire fencing back there. I don't know if y'all can see this because the glare on my camera. But yeah, there's wire fencing that goes from retaining wall to retaining wall that we got to get rid of and clear everything that's growing in it, which is blackberries, grapes, and a pear tree, um, so I can keep line of sight on the dogs. And both of the dogs keep eating unripe blackberries, which makes them sick, so they need to be out of their reach. But, uh, yeah, there's Chinese privet hedge, which I despise. I hate that stuff. It's impossible to control and impossible to kill. So, and we've got some dead trees and stuff like that. But, yeah, things are coming along. We're working on the inside of the house. We really haven't done anything on the outside. <clears throat> but that's okay because I'm not planning on my garden going in until next year, along with my chickens and rabbits if I can sneak them. But uh, we're getting things done. I hung some pictures this morning. Um, I had lots of wall space in my old house. Lots. And I had cathedral ceiling that I had, you know, from the back of the sofa clear up to the cathedral ceiling. I had family photos. Look, ugh, my hairpin keeps slipping out of my scarf. Um, yeah, and I don't have near that much space here. So, we're trying to figure out what art goes where. And we haven't even gotten into the photographs yet. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set out five boxes for the five kids. Please do not mess with the gate. Whatever's going on on the other side of that gate is not your business. Thank you. Sorry. Um... I think I'm going to set up five boxes, one for each of the kids, and just start putting photographs in them. And, uh, yeah. 
because that way they can deal with it. They can figure out what to do with them all. <laughs> I have my photographs, my mom's, my sister's, my husband's family. You know, I have generations back worth of photos. And I need to make sure that the right ancestors go to the right kids because he has his kids and I have my kids. And, uh, yeah, we have a lot more windows here, so there's a lot less empty wall space. Could you please come down from there? Weezer? Weezer? She's up there tracking bugs through the Queen Anne's lace, I guess. I'm trying to let them run out as much as they can because they're going to be closed up in the house for a couple of hours when the boys are doing the lawn. But we have the nicest young men that do our lawn. A couple of high school brothers. And man, they are, they are so polite. I love it. Small town life. These boys are just, their mom and daddy did well. And they're helpful and eager to work. And, you know, they lost our phone number and tried knocking on the door a couple of times. We have got to get the doorbell installed. Um, but, yeah, they didn't want to, you know, impose or anything else. So, we, uh, my husband talked to the boys yesterday and said, look, if, Y'all can't get a hold of us. You will let us know what day you're coming. And you come on a schedule. We will put your check under the doormat. So that if you don't see us, you will still get paid. So. Yeah. They're good kids. They are very good kids. I'm going to hate it when they finish high school and go off to college. We're going to have to get them to recommend kids to replace them, I guess. But yeah. We're, we're getting stuff done. Weezer is feeling much better. We got finally got their swimming pool down so that she has a place to drink water and she lays in her water bowl. I don't even see it. Whoops. I can't tell what you're looking at. There we go. Yeah. She lays in her water bowl while she drinks so that she can cool off. She's such a spoiled dog. They both are. I'm going to have to fill up the water bowl after the boys mow. But yeah. She's my water dog. She loves laying in the water. She has the most lab genes, obviously. But yeah, that's what we're doing. I think we're going to see um, our oldest daughter sometime before the end of the month, which will be exciting. I think we're going to drive to Springfield to see them. Um, his work is going well. I'm getting stuff accomplished, bit by bit. But, I love you guys. Y'all be safe. Y'all be... be still. Be productive. Be creative. Be silly, as I watch Weezer rolling around on the dirt back here. Um, be silly. Do something just really goofy. Make somebody smile. Make somebody laugh. And be here next time.